last week I talked just a little bit, or the last first video I should say, I talked about what happens in the renewal process, that it's a process of changing not only your cognitive mind, but your subconscious mind. And until that happens, there's not very much maturity that take pl takes place in our life. And if you listen to all these videos that it's going to be talking about, it should be four, it, it, you'll understand why that is. Why can't we act like Christians until we get our mind transformed? Because after all, we're born again, right? Spirit, the Spirit of God's alive in us and so forth. But you see, until we mature and learn to grow a little bit, we're led by the flesh. And God wants us eventually to be led by the Spirit. So why? So the step three, we can return to Him, see? Well, Romans 12, 1 says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. I'm begging you people, based on this wonderful salvation, present your body to God. What does that mean? Present your body to God. See, it's a responsibility we have. He says in verse 1, present your body to God, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your spiritual responsibility. See, if you're sitting around waiting for God to shower you with good things, waiting to help you grow up, boom, I'm going to grow up, all of a sudden I'll be there. I had a young man one time say, right after the first year, Pastor, I'm going to start walking in the Spirit. And I said, how, do you, how are you going to do that? What, what's that going to look like? He said, I don't know, but he said, I really believe God's going to do a, a, a mighty thing on me and I'll be able to walk in the Spirit. See, if you're waiting on God to do the mighty thing, you're never going to get there. And he says, it's your responsibility to present your body to God. And what are we talking about when we talk about presenting our body? We're talking about those situations in life that make you rear up and want to respond in the flesh. You know, our flesh constantly wants retribution, wants to get even, wants, wants to defend itself, on and on. Our flesh drives our life because prior to Christ, we had, that's what life was. But now that we're in Christ, we can be led by the Spirit and put to death the flesh so we can enjoy the benefits God has. So that's what the responsibility is about. And that's what presenting your body to God a living sacrifice. Sacrifice hurts, doesn't it? Well, life hurts, right? Life hurts, whether you're a Christian or not. And if you're willing to sacrifice your opportunity to get even or to get uh, uh, <laughs> retribution of some sort or to, get, uh, or, or to explain yourself, defend yourself, and all these things we waste our energy doing, if you're willing to sacrifice that by turning to God, God says, number one, that's our responsibility. Number two, that there's blessings that's going to come from that. And that's what the next video is going to be about. In verse two, what is the blessing? See, we know that he's talking about these things, not acting like the world, because in verse two, and I'll quote it just briefly, be not conformed to the pattern of the world. In other words, don't let the world squeeze you into its mold but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Paul says there's a great blessing that'll happen if you're willing to sacrifice your opportunity to get even, for instance, or to get to defend yourself or whatever the problem is. If you're willing to sacrifice that, you're separating yourself unto God, holy and acceptable. That's what holy means. A lot of people get the misinterpretation or misunderstanding that holiness has got to be perfection. Christianity has nothing to do with perfection, friends. It has to do with connection. My connection to God. My righteousness doesn't come from my perfection. Thank God. My righteousness comes from the perfection of Christ and my faith in Him. See, And so what Paul's talking about is because of this great opportunity that God has given us, I'm begging you to present your body to God a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, which is your spiritual responsibility. Now, 1 Peter 4.1 says, this is all a part of presenting your body to God a living sacrifice. 1 Peter 4.1 says, Therefore, since Christ suffered for us in, in the flesh, arm yourself with the same mindset or same attitude. The same mind. What does that mean? Well, the mind of Christ at that point in life was he knew life was going to hurt. He knew life was a sacrifice. It was going to hurt. He sacrificed his place in heaven to come here where we are, where all the pain and suffering is, in order to show us how to live. So he, that was his mindset. And what he's saying is, because Christ suffered for us in the flesh, we should have the same mindset. And that mindset should say to you, life's going to hurt, whether you're Christian or non-Christian. And because it's going to hurt regardless, God's calling me to a higher walk. 
So if we arm ourselves with that same mindset, if you're willing to suffer, give up on the opportunity to get even, give up on the opportunity to defend yourself and all these negative things that we do. If you're willing to suffer that, if you're willing to give that to God, then what it says here in verse four, chapter 4, verse 1, you've ceased from sin. You've turned your life over to God in such a fashion that you're not willing to just reach out in the flesh, but you're willing to reach up to heaven and talk to God. You're willing to call on Him for the situations that you're dealing with. And that's what sacrificial giving to God is all about. So present your body to God, a living sacrifice. I'm alive and, I, and I'm angry right now. I'm fearful. I'm frustrated, whatever it is. But God, I'm not going to react in the flesh. I'm going to reach up to you. Lord, right now, I need some help. You just talk to him. Quiet your mind so he can talk to you. And you don't have to do this the moment you're in the process, the moment you're in the pain. You can, you can go home later on in the day and say, man, why did I act that way? Why did I do that? Lord Jesus, would you talk to me about that? And you can, you can tell him where you were. This is what I was feeling. God, I was really angry, but I don't fully understand it. And God will begin to communicate to you if you give him a chance. Quiet your mind. Let him speak right to your mind. And when he speaks, you speak. Because when you speak, you change. Anyone who speaks the word that comes from God into your mind, you speak that out, I guarantee you, you change and the atmosphere around you will change. So he's begging us to present our bodies. That's our responsibility, friends. You're not going to get something for nothing. There's a cost for the blessings of God. Jesus paid the big price. Now you and I have to pay a price. And that price is we're going to make our flesh behave. We're going to quit being led by the flesh and begin to be led by the Spirit. And Paul's saying, if you present your body to God, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, you're taking care of your responsibility, basically. And, and, and I want you to recognize that getting answers from the book, the Bible, is a wonderful thing. But I guarantee you there will be a greater transformation process if you're willing to talk to Him and receive from him and to speak what he says. You see, that's God's greatest desire for you is that, number one, you experience him. Do you realize when the Bible talks about knowing Christ, to know God, he's talking about to have experienced God. Do you realize Matthew 7, 21 is a day he's going to look at people who think they've done all right because they've done all these works, but he'll look at them and say, depart from me, ye who work iniquity. I never knew you. Well, what does that mean? He didn't know us. No, they didn't have an experience with him. They were probably taking the words of the book and doing what they thought was right without hearing from God and doing what God called them to do. And he said, I never knew you. Boy, I tell you, that's something I don't want to hear on that judgment day. I'd rather hear, well done, good and faithful servant. You won't hear that unless you've got a communication link with God. Unless you're getting your mind renewed. The only process, the only possibility of getting your mind renewed is communicating with God. Now, I'm not talking about the cognitive. I renew the cognitive mind by memorizing scripture, by study. But I renew the subconscious mind, which is the computer that drives my life, remember? I renew that by my communication, my experience with God, with truth. So, God desires us to experience Him more than you can imagine. And let me tell you something from personal experience. That's where the blessings are. That's where the real blessings of God are. When you experience God, oh, life becomes <laughs> amazing. And power, I'm telling you, God will grant you power if you learn to connect to Him instead of connected flesh, learn to connect to Him. He'll grant you power. He'll grant you the ability to serve Him in a way that right now you may only be dreaming about. So friends, step one, I beg you, Paul says, to present your body to God a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, separated unto God, which is your spiritual responsibility. Next video, we'll talk about getting into not being conformed to the pattern of the world and how that changes, what literally changes in us and what that does to us on the outside. Friends, I hope you're enjoying what's being taught. If you are, give me a like, give me a thumbs up, give me some comments. Subscribe to my channel because there's a lot more coming and everything I post will, in fact, change your life if you put it to work. 
God bless you. I'll see you on the next video.